This week, the cybersecurity world has been rocked by unprecedented threats that put your data, your privacy, and even your democracy at risk. Cryptocurrency scams have reached alarming new heights, with losses skyrocketing to over $110 million. The digital world is under siege, and the question isn't if you'll be affected, but when and how severely. Are you prepared for what's coming? In this video, we will discuss this week's updates in the cybersecurity world. So, let's get into it. Let's start with a story that reads like a modern-day spy thriller. The U.S. Department of Justice has just struck a significant blow against a Russian propaganda machine known as Doppelganger. In a sweeping operation, they have seized 32 internet domains used by this insidious network. As it turns out, Doppelganger isn't just some fringe group of internet trolls. It's a sophisticated operation directed by the Russian government itself, with the explicit goal of manipulating public opinion and influencing elections including the upcoming 2024 U.S. presidential elections. The DOG has called out three companies, Social Design Agency, Structure and National Technology, and A&O Dialogue, for working directly under the orders of the Russian presidential administration. This isn't just about Russia versus the United States. The implications of this operation stretch far beyond our borders. Doppelganger's goal is to reduce international support for Ukraine, bolster pro-Russian policies globally, and sway elections in countries around the world. In another update, Google has just released its monthly security update for Android, and this one is particularly crucial. They've patched a high security vulnerability that's been actively exploited in the wild. That's tech speak for hackers have already been using this to attack people's phones. The vulnerability, known as CVE-2024-32896, allows attackers to escalate their privileges on an Android device. In simpler terms, it's like finding a secret passage that lets you bypass all the locks in a building. Once exploited, this flaw could give an attacker control over your device, potentially accessing your personal data, messages, and even financial information. And here is the worrying part. There are indications that this vulnerability may have been under limited targeted exploitation. In other words, Sophisticated attackers may have been using this flaw to target specific individuals or organizations. Next up, we meet Hedmer, a hacktivist group that's been exclusively targeting organizations in Russia and Belarus. Now, you might be thinking, hacktivists attack in Russia? Isn't that a good thing? But as we'll see, the world of cyber attacks is rarely black and white. Hedmer has been active since 2023 and has used some pretty sophisticated tactics. One of its favorite tricks is exploiting a vulnerability in WinRAR, a popular file compression tool. This flaw, known as CVE-2023-38831, allows it to execute malicious code on a system just by getting someone to open a specifically crafted archive. It's like hiding a Trojan horse inside a seemingly innocent zip file. They're strategic in their targets, going after governments, transportation systems, energy companies, and manufacturing plants. And here is where it gets interesting. Unlike some hacktivist groups that are all about maximum damage, Hitbear has a profit motive. They're using ransomware, specifically variants of Longbit for Windows and Babook for Linux, to encrypt their victims' data and demand payment for its release. Now, let's turn our attention to a new player in the ransomware game that's causing quite a stir in the cybersecurity world. Meet Cicada3301 a ransomware variant that's emerged from the ashes of the infamous Black Cat operation. If you're wondering why this is significant, let me paint you a picture. Imagine a phoenix rising from the ashes, but instead of bringing hope, it brings a new wave of digital terror. That's Cicada 3301 for you. This isn't just another run-of-the-mill ransomware. It's a sophisticated piece of malware written in Rust, a programming language known for its speed and reliability. It can target both Windows and Linux systems. It's like a predator that can hunt on both land and sea. What makes Cicada 3301 particularly concerning is its apparent focus on small to medium-sized businesses. These are often the companies that lack the robust cybersecurity measures of larger corporations, making them prime targets. The ransomware exploits vulnerabilities to gain initial access and then uses the compromised user's own credentials to spread throughout the network. It's like a digital burglar using your old keys to ransack your house. 
But Cicada 3301 doesn't stop there. It goes to great lengths to cover its tracks, deleting shadow copies, disabling system recovery, and even clearing event logs. This makes it incredibly difficult for cybersecurity teams to investigate and recover from an attack. It's as if the burglar not only robbed you, but also erased all the security camera footage. Now, let's shift our focus to a different kind of digital threat. The US Federal Trade Commission has reported a staggering increase in losses from Bitcoin ATM scams. We're not talking about a small bump here. We're looking at nearly 10 times the amount lost in 2020, totaling over $110 million in 2023 alone. In 2024, it's already shaping up to be another record-breaking year, with $65 million lost in just the first half. The scammer, often posing as a government official or a law enforcement agent, contacts the victim with an urgent warning. They claim the victim's accounts have been compromised and that they need to protect their savings by depositing cash into a Bitcoin ATM. It's a modern twist on the classic your bank account is in danger scam, but with a high-tech veneer that makes it seem more legitimate. What's particularly troubling about these scams is who they're targeting. The FTC reports that adults aged 60 and older are more than three times as likely to fall victim compared to younger adults. The median loss? A whooping $10,000. That's not pocket change. For many, that's a significant portion of their savings. Once the victim scans the QR code provided by the scammer and deposits the cash, that money is gone. Unlike traditional bank transfers, cryptocurrency transactions are irreversible. It's like handing over your life savings to a stranger on the street. There is no getting it back. In a next threat, the FBI has issued a stark warning about North Korean hacking groups aggressively targeting cryptocurrency companies and their employees. These North Korean groups are particularly interested in companies dealing with cryptocurrency exchange-traded funds and other related financial products. Why? Because that's where the money is. In the digital age, cryptocurrency represents a new frontier of wealth, and these hackers are the modern-day bank robbers. These attacks are incredibly hard to detect, even for those with advanced cybersecurity knowledge. The hackers communicate in fluent English. They are well-versed in the technical aspects of cryptocurrency, and they use stolen images and professionally crafted websites to make their schemes look legitimate. Their tactics are diverse and evolving. Sometimes, they pose as recruiters, offering lucrative job opportunities. Other times, they pretend to be investors with too good to be true investment offers. They might even impersonate someone the victim knows personally. It's a dizzying array of disguises, all designed to gain trust and access. Once they've established contact, these hackers deploy custom-made malware designed to steal crypto assets. Next, we come to perhaps the most shocking revelation of the week. Recently, GitHub, the world's largest software development platform, became a breeding ground for a sinister new threat. Cybersecurity researchers have discovered a widespread malware campaign that's turning GitHub into a distribution center for the Luma Stealer, a particularly nasty piece of information stealing malware. Here's how it works. The attackers are posting thousands of comments across a wide range of GitHub projects. These comments pretend to be helpful fixes for various coding issues, but they're actually luring unsuspecting developers into downloading malware-infested files. This malware is a digital vacuum cleaner for your personal information. It sucks up cookies, credentials, passwords, credit card details, and browsing history from popular browsers like Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. But it doesn't stop there. It also targets cryptocurrency wallets, hunting for private keys and other sensitive information that could give attackers access to your digital assets. What makes this campaign particularly insidious is its scale and sophistication. We're not talking about a few isolated incidents here. Researchers have found over 29,000 malicious comments posted in just a three-day period. That's an average of about 400 infected comments every hour. This malware campaign is affecting more than individual developers. It has the potential to infiltrate the entire software supply chain. But let's shift gears for a moment and talk about a threat that's been causing headaches for cybersecurity professionals around the world. It goes by the name of Macropack, and it's turning the tables on the good guys in a way that's both clever and concerning. Macropack is a red team tool. Red teams are the folks who play the role of attackers, 
testing an organization's defenses by trying to break in. They use tools like Macropack to create obfuscated malware, essentially malicious code designed to slip past security measures undetected. Cybersecurity analysts at Cisco Talos have discovered that real-world hackers are now using Macropack to deliver a variety of malicious payloads. It's like the bad guys have stolen the good guys' playbook and are using it to score touchdowns against our digital defenses. What makes Macropack particularly dangerous is its ability to produce what are called undisputable payloads, malware that's so well disguised it can evade even sophisticated security measures. It's like a digital chameleon blending in with legitimate code to avoid detection. The rise of tools like Macobook highlights a growing problem in cybersecurity, the dual-use nature of many security tools. What do you think? Which one was the worst among all? Share your thoughts in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.